Welcome to the Dr. Leadership Show, where we take a look at how you approach your work and personal life and how we can make the most out of both of them. A weekly get-together where we get real about self-improvement and development as we all make this not-so-easy journey through life. Our discussions will cover ideas and concepts from how to grow your career to how to lead your family towards prosperity and happiness. We don't pretend to know it all, and the doctor is the first to be vulnerable, discussing his own weaknesses, both past and present. This is about growing together and having some fun while we discuss what is happening in the crazy world we live in and how to make the most of it. Let's strive for awesome together. Let's get after it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Dr. Leadership Podcast. Hope you're having an awesome day. Happy Wednesday. This is being uh, dropped uh, actually into the system on a Sunday. I'm back from an amazing trip uh, that I'm going to talk about a little bit uh, for an incentive trip for the year, a uh, recognition trip. And I first of all want to start off by just hoping everybody enjoyed last week's episode. Uh, Kim Addis uh, interview around her company, Frame of Mind Coaching, joined the show, the Leadership Lounge. Awesome lady, very, very smart lady out of uh, Toronto, Canada, the, the Toronto area and has been doing this for about 20 years. Executive coach, mentor, can be around relationships, individual contributors, executive coaching, just a great job. She'll be back again. Hope you gave it a listen. Hope you enjoyed it. This uh, coming week, I'll be dropping another episode out there from uh, Dr. Chris uh, Fousey, who is a behavioral uh, leadership coach, Uh, also was a part of the Scott um, Peterson uh, murder trial out in California 20-odd years ago, and back involved today working in the uh, Attorney General's office out in Modesto County. Uh, that thing's heated back up, so he's going to be dropping on the show. Remember, you can get out to these episodes and get to the Leadership Lounge and listen to these awesome interviews from other leaders. That way you don't have to just listen to me. And you can do that by joining our membership site. Go out to our website, www drleadershipresults.com. Click on subscribe. Five bucks a month. It's a great investment. Promise you. Was down on this event for uh, a cup uh, for the last week. Had a number of people come up and go, hey, listen to the show. Awesome stuff. That's other people, not me, not being braggadocious. Check it out. Can cancel at any time. Also, feel free to give us an email. If you like a topic and you want me to go a little bit deeper, you got an idea for a topic, it's like, hey, that one sucked. Whatever the feedback is, pros or cons, remember feedback is a gift and I choose to accept it. Uh, give us an email. And that's at drleadershipresults at gmail.com. Uh, come to us and give us some insight. Also, while I was gone, we dropped the episode, um, you know, Billionaire's Focus uh, from episode 91 two weeks ago. Got some real positive feedback on that. I think it's always good when you take someone that's been very successful. Financially isn't always the, the leading deal. There's a lot of things that can lead to financial success. Uh, but my conversation with this individual uh, was very impactful to me. Um, wanted to remain anonymous, so I'm respecting those um, uh, those wishes. But some great insight on uh, eight basic principles to kind of run through your mind to ensure your success. It's about who you're around. It's about how you act. It's about being thankful. It's about being driven. Give it a listen. I really enjoyed uh, putting that one together after my conversation. That was a couple weeks ago. So hope you're enjoying your day. As I said, I just returned from uh, my company's annual incentive trip to the beautiful, and I repeat, beautiful island of Aruba. Was either my, I think it was my fourth trip, might have been my fifth. We had an incentive trip here in January of uh, 2006 uh, with my organization. And it had been 18 years. We came back, my wife's first trip, and uh, it's her new favorite island. She stated it multiple times, and she's been to a lot of them. It is just absolutely beautiful. A couple items on why she, she thinks this. One, first of all, beautiful. The waters, the multiple colors of blue, the beaches, great shopping, great restaurants. If you're ever on the island of Aruba, I'm going to give a shout out. Restaurant called Taste My Aruba. Unbelievable uh, history around the restaurant. 103-year-old home. Uh all fresh. I mean, we're sitting eating dinner and here comes a guy with four great big fish still flopping that he's bringing from the marina for uh, for cooking that night, <laughs> making fillets out of it right on the cooking stand next to us. It was unbelievable experience. We were able to take uh, 32 people out there with us. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that. My team winners, 
um, from around the country were there and their significant others had an awesome dinner. Going to have to explain the expense report, but uh, it was an awesome, awesome time. They call it the Happy Island. And the people there live by the motto. I think that's what really inspires uh, my wife's thought there as well as my thought on it. A smile at every engagement. It was easy to recognize their great attitude in life. Being the fact, (laughs) and the fact I was part of uh, an awesome recognition trip, being that they are happy and their attitude, and we recognized it and we were on a recognition trip, I thought I would share my thoughts on recognition, both receiving and giving today in today's episode. So it's episode 92. We're calling it Recognition and Humility Hand in Hand. And I think it's important to kind of talk about this. There's two things around recognition. One is receiving it. I'm going to start there, give some feedback and some ideas, at least my perspectives on it. And then there's giving recognition. Both are critical, and there's a right way and a wrong way to kind of handle these things. So first, let's talk about receiving recognition. It was really interesting. You know, you kind of sit back. You ever people watch? So Iowa is known for the big state fair. If you ever are in Iowa, and everyone should visit, it's a beautiful, well-kept secret place, promise you. We're not the potato folks. That's Idaho. We are Iowa. Corn and beans. Corn and soybeans, pigs. We feed 11% of every calorie intaked in the United States comes out of the state of Iowa. So don't make fun of us. We'll quit feeding you. Don't be that way because we will quit feeding you. But uh, And another thing. <laughs> Going through these airports, last, I digress. Going through the airports, I posted this on LinkedIn last night, uh, public service announcement. Our capital is spelled D-E-S, capital D-E-S, capital M-O-I-N-E-S. It is not Des Moines. It is Des Moines. It's French uh, background originally. And uh, the S's are silent. Just like in the state of Illinois. It's not Illinois. Who taught these people the capitals and the states in school? It's just, it, it's amazing to me. So we were, not, uh, we were not on a flight to Des Moines from Miami last night. We were on a flight to Des Moines. So let's talk about receiving recognition. As I said, um, I started talking about the state fair. <laughs> I got all wrapped up. The reason I was bringing that up is people watching. It's always really interesting when you get a bunch of people in one spot to see how they interact, hold themselves, portray themselves, interact with others, engage others, etc. And it was like being at the state fair. That's where I was going with that comment (laughs) this last week. We had 250 people down there, 125-ish winners, plus significant others, spouses, girlfriends, boyfriends, family member, whatever it might be. And it's just interesting watching how different people react to a lot of things, but especially to recognition. Believe it or not, there are good and appropriate ways to react and engage when you are being recognized, as well as there's some, hey man, don't do it like that moments. The number one thing I would recommend to everyone is to remain humble. Show some humility. I saw some people do this really well, and then I saw some people who were so focused on themselves the, the chest puff, the clothing they had, the jewelry they wore. It was all about, look at me. It was a Kardashian moment to the left and to the right, and it's really, really sad. They're seeking even more affirmation of how great they are in their own minds, even when they are on an incentive trip. Very sad to see people focused, as I've said many times, to the me instead of the we. Why does everybody have to be like this? The world's not a competition. I struggle with people who are self-centered. I think everyone's kind of figured that out. There was an individual on this trip that made sure to get, you know, a picture with the trophy with every leader, whether involved in their business line or not, simply to ensure everyone knew them and praised them. Big miss, folks. Be humble and quiet. This isn't a, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm awesome. Okay, man, you're on the incentive trip. Everybody kind of gets it that you had a good 12-month period. Now, I don't know if your brother-in-law gave you a big order and that's why you got it, or if you've been slugging it in the streets and that's how you want it. So the thing that you have to do is be remembered as being a good person when you're being recognized. Think of it this way. I see these all the time and it just cracks me up. We all have seen the 
the mouthy boxer or the MMA fighter, right? Slapping the other person, the guy or gal, let's say it's guys here for this analogy or this, this, uh, um, uh, comparison, they're real mouthy at the weigh-in, right? And the other fighter is real quiet, not attention-seeking. And nothing pleases me more in this world than when the quiet guy absolutely obliterates the mouthy guy in like early round one, right? <laughs> A big smile on my face as the, the mouthy guy wakes up laying on the floor twitching and <laughs> realizes he just got his ass beat. I mean, how many times have you seen it? Or the ones that drop their guard and kind of get, you know, in the face. Ha ha, can't hit me. Come on, give me your best shot. And whap! (laughs) Next thing you know, people are looking at the bottoms of their feet, laying on the ground, laying on the, on the, uh, (laughs) the floor in the middle of the ring. See, people don't like braggers. I I hate braggadocious people. People don't like self-centered people. So why? It, 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 it stems from a big insecurity in your own mind if you always have to talk about yourself. Just remember, man, in anything in life, few exceptions, someone is always bigger, faster, in my case, smarter. There's lots of people smarter than me, more attractive, more skilled, oh gosh, taller, more fit. Just remember, man, you're just a number on this planet, one of eight billion. Also realize it's really hard to repeat. If you're being recognized for something, like this incentive trip, it's great you want it. My company, we've got a couple thousand salespeople out there, right? We're bringing 100 100 people in, 105 people in, top five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent depending on the business line, et cetera. Some were top 10% because a smaller group. Um, and then our biggest sales groups, maybe it's top 5%. It's really, really hard to repeat. So always be humble. Use humility. It serves your own best interest. People don't, well, let me, I guess maybe people do. Do you want to re- be remembered as, as that guy or gal that was braggadocious and friggin', hey, who is the asshole from California? Who is the asshole from Alabama? I'm making up states here and names. But some people left that going, wow, did not like that guy or gal's attitude. Don't be that guy or gal. The second thing I will point out is that even if you are number one in something, there were lots of others that helped you get there. I'll make it about my company here for a minute. We sell products, tangible items that do things, that break, that require service people to come in fix. It required truck drivers and logistics people and personnel to get it there. It requires uh, software engineers and uh, solution engineers to go and hook it up and make the magic and all the smart stuff happen. You're just a cog in the wheel of success. You aren't the wheel of success. So remember that. You should always make it about the team and the others involved. It shows tremendous maturity And also, you will be remembered much longer for how you act in the spotlight versus the award you won. Remember, lots of people are getting recognized. Lots of people left with the plaque. Lots of people held up the crystal trophy because they were all top of their field there. But the ones that will be remembered are how they acted in the spotlight. Simply put, don't be a narcissistic asshole. (laughs) I wrote that as my note. I'm reading it verbatim. And... It's true. Do not be that self-centered person. Be appreciative and thankful. Also, when at a spot where recognition is being handed out, be sure to cheer the loudest for others. Right? They're winning too. Don't try to shine the light on yourself, but cheer for others. Be a great cheerleader. Stand up and clap. High five them. Great human skills or a great human skill, I guess is a better way to say it, is caring for others. The we versus me. Them versus me. I went into coaching because I love high-fiving others. If you're asked to speak or accept an award, this is even another step. When you're receiving recognition and you're given the microphone, boy, oh boy, shift the light to others quickly. First of all, your spouse or significant other needs to be recognized and loudly. High achievers in anything in life 
Um, sometimes we're so driven that it's hard on our families. You might be gone all the time. Maybe you're traveling four days a week. My brother-in-law retired. Um, he was gone uh, three, four days a week for 30 of the 40 years, 35 of the 40 years. My sister ran the household, lifted a lot of weight. You got to make sure you take care of those people and call them out because when you're working late and you're doing all these other things, they're holding the fort down. I mean, you got to be constantly on the clock to be number one. And your loved ones will, I mean, they're putting up with this. It ain't easy. Call them out first and thank them. Then move to others who support you. Like I said, your team members. Your name may be on the trophy, but others help deliver the results. And that's where that humility comes in. Understand the environment. Understand what's really going on. There are these people that are, so in this society with social media, Insta scam and fake book and all that, we have started to just let people know that, you know, influencers, bleh, I, I do that every time. It's all about, God, look at me, look at me, look at me. And it's just so nauseating. Don't be a part of that. Be a cheerleader for others. Be somebody that receives recognition with humility. Be humble. Raise your hand and say, hey, I want to talk about what allowed me to get there. And that's my significant other. That's my teammates. That's my boss. That's the people that build the widgets that we sell. That's the people that are in customer service and customer support that allow me to continue to work on the relationship and not handling all the other pieces. You may win the deal on one day, but there's, let's say it's a five-year engagement before they upgrade whatever you sell or change. In the insurance industry, like my wife, it's an annual deal. You get a cheer for one day and then you got to respond. Then the team has to support. Otherwise, you aren't going to be recognized next year. And remember, it's always tough to repeat, so you better be humble. Otherwise, it's going to kill you internally. It's going to chew you up because someone else won this year. Oh, my God, I bet people hate me now, don't think I'm any good. That isn't the case, man. There's got to be somebody number one each year. There's hundreds of them. I mean, I could have had another 40 different people down at this recognition uh, deal that weren't number one that are just as good as the people that won that year. Timing may have been off, whatever. I'm very fortunate. i got very skilled people. So when you're receiving recognition, humble and humility. Now on to the other side, talking to the leaders out there now for a minute, or all of us because we want to be cheerleaders for our friends, our family, and those around us at work. Giving recognition is tough too, and you got to do it right. So pay attention here, you leaders, because this is where I see it go bad. A lot of times drives me nuts. Again, I so I don't do everything right. And I'm not saying uh, I am awesome. I'm not saying I'm awesome. But I do love to give others recognition. And that is a big reason on why I went into leadership. I said earlier, that's why I went into coaching. I love cheering for others. I love high-fiving others on big wins. It's so It's just so awesome to see when, when I'm talking uh, about, you know, I'll just say, hey, Bill won this great uh, thing this year. Gosh, what an unbelievable event. Had a huge quota. Um, ended up 125% of playing. You're going through, and you see that spouse looking at their loved one, grinning ear to ear. Man, I just it just gives me chills to see people being recognized for great work. Many leaders don't thank the sponsors. One of the takeaways, and it, it's hard to get the time in, right? We had to recognize 125 people at a recognition banquet. So you got to go fast. So I get it. If you can, always recognize the spouse and the winner together. I had to do the presenting uh, last year. This year, I uh, didn't have to do some of the presenting. I got to, uh, got to sit and enjoy the dinner. We kind of shift that around. And one thing I did is, um, you know, Matt and Jenny Brook were a couple that won. And I say, I want to welcome Matt and, and Jenny Brook. Jenny, thanks for all you do at home. Matt is a champion. He's challenging. And I'm sure he's challenging at home too, Jenny. But thanks for all you do at home, holding down the fort, keeping him inspired, and keeping him focused on what he needs to do for you and your family. It doesn't go unnoticed. Do something like that. Because then... Man, we want the support at home rowing in the same direction with us since performance will be higher if you do that. If the home team is cheering for the greatness too, man, 
you got a, you got a steam engine rolling down the tracks. If the spouses look at you and don't see authenticity and sincerity, it has a detrimental effect. And that's what I would say most importantly. Don't, if you aren't authentically happy for people, don't be the presenter. Ask somebody to present. If you are fake and people can see through it and know that that is not your true self, it's not going to have a good reverberation through the, through the, uh, the tables at the dinner event. And you could see it. Certain people come up and you go, oh, God, swing and a miss. Why'd they let them talk? You're going to drive a detrimental impact if you are not authentic and you are not sincere. You want the home team helping to achieve the company's results. This is an easy one. Why wouldn't, as a leader, why are you a leader? I talked about this episode one. If you want to be in the spotlight and you want to be the person in charge and you want to be all of that, it's not really a leader. That's a boss, right? Or that's a title. Titles mean nothing to me. I don't care. Pay me. That's what I want. Give me a safe environment. Allow me to be inspirational to others. Allow me to engage in the streets. Let me be a seller with these people and help them. So I took 32 folks out for dinner when I was down in Aruba, and I made sure to approach each spouse or significant other and thank them for the support. Smiles all around. And I really mean it. I love these people. And as a leader, you need to understand that your success is not dependent on you. Your success is dependent on all the others. Spend some time with them. Talk about their kids. Remember their name. Remember the next day. What a great time last night, Jenny, Julie, Bill, Bob. I'm so glad that your kids are doing well in school. Hey, good luck in the soccer game next week. You want to talk about having an impact on people? Not with the intent of simply making an impact to drive results, but truly authentically feeling that way as a leader and giving recognition to others is critical. Some people just aren't good at it. Probably not great leaders. They may be smart enough. They may be P&L you know, jockeys. But it's about the peoples. It's about the folks. It's about those that are making the deals happen. So I took these 32 people out to dinner and we had smiles all around. I did it because I truly believe what I'm saying. Say words like, I appreciate, I thank you, I know it's not easy. It doesn't go unnoticed what you're doing. Your husband or your wife is absolutely a killer, and I appreciate your support at home. You know, Mark Twain once said, I can live for two months on a good compliment. Think about the impact as a leader or a team leader or a big-time executive that you're having on others. Getting that psyche in the right spot, not because you're manipulating, but because you truly believe it, you're unstoppable. Driving belief, driving positive mojo, you're unstoppable. Give people the warm fuzzies. They deserve it. If they've won a a recognition, I assume they've deserved it. Maybe it's simple things like tenure. Hey, Bob's been with us for 25 years. I typically say something like, it's been the longest 40 years of Bob's life. A little joke, break it up, and then I say, no, in all, uh, in all seriousness here, 25 years, what a loyal employee. Evidently a killer for 25 years because nobody stays in the single industry for a long time anymore. Everybody jumps around. I didn't win it here. It's someone else's fault. My territory's not good. The people aren't good. I wasn't given a fair chance, and they jumped to something else. Not my gig. I'm not telling you to stay somewhere that you that you aren't happy in, but man, loyalty and those types of things, great, great stuff. I like the Mark Twain quote. Man, a compliment really does so much for people. And again, they deserve it. As a leader, make sure to approach all others at the same level they're at. Don't approach an engagement in an incentive trip or a recognition uh, event And let everybody know that you're the boss or you're the executive or you're the big guy or gal in the room. Make it about them. Come, And I don't mean this in any derogatory manner, not coming down to their level. I don't mean it that they're beneath you at all. I'm just saying, get rid of the title and just be a good person to them. Because the impacts mentally, first of all, because you should just do it. Be a good person. Be authentic. Be sincere. 
but the impact you have on others, phenomenal. And what a great place to be is a world where people truly care for each other, authentically, sincerely, sincere, sincerely, bleh, can tell I've been in the islands for a week. You're going to make an impact on the community around you if you act like that. Be a servant's attitude. I talk about this a lot. It's a book I read a long time ago, and it has always stuck with me. I think it comes from my parents, too. They never had someone they wouldn't help. I've said it before. My dad was the one with the broom in his hand when you walked through the double doors into the back where all the guys were getting stuff done, the refrigeration techs, the truck drivers, the carpenters, the steam fitters, the sheet metal guys. Dad was one of them. And you know what? They all called him Mr. Taylor, but he insisted on being called Harold. And at his funeral, the pews were lined with people that had been working for him for a long time. But they never thought they were working for him. They thought they were working with him. Dad very seldom pulled the my names on the building card. If someone was out of line, they knew he was the boss. But man, what a great environment. I always tried to you know, take from that. And I've been very fortunate with my siblings and my other family members. Got some pretty humble people uh, involved in all of it. People should not feel that you are special or the boss. Like I said before, be one of the people. Be one of the group. Be one of the team. Be willing to show how much they mean to you. You are not special. You may have had great accolades all through your career, and to get into a position of power and a leadership position, you've probably done some things pretty well. But don't live off of the of what you do well. Live off of others doing well. Live off of, I promise you, you will feel better making others feel better. It's a great drug pumping through your veins when you're given recognition and appreciation to others. This country needs a whole lot more of that. Drop the it's about me. Drop the spotlight centered on you and start shining. Turn the lights up in the whole room you're in. Let everybody be seen. It's a great attribute to have. You're not special and remember your success is dependent on other on others. It's on them, not the other way around. My teams do great not because of me, but because of them and all of them working together. Be that humble leader. Be an appreciative leader. Be one of the team. And I go back to this. Sincerity and authenticity can't be faked. People will pick up on it. We saw those that tried this this last week, and, and, and actually the feeling we get, and everybody at the table would just look at each other and go, oh God, you could just see the, that ain't real. It's embarrassing to see. Yuck. To inspire others, focus on them from your heart, from your soul. Don't focus on them from this position of power. I promise you they'll appreciate it and go through walls for you. You feel awesome. They feel awesome. And then you all can keep that shit up. Go win again. See you next year on the incentive trip. Talk next week. <laughs>